Hi guys, this is a follow-on from my Which of your rubber band cars is fastest, Grandad? videos. Um, what I've done is I've restored a couple of my original rubber band powered cars. The one in the middle is as close as I can get to my original rubber band powered car number one. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a second. This one is as close as I can get to my original rubber band powered car number four. And then that's the one I made last night which was designed specifically just to go fast in my kitchen. Right, number one, the main feature of number one was it used 35mm film canisters, plastic canisters. As the back axle, it's got holes drilled through the middle and it actually runs on a ball pen tube. So the actual bearing surface is the outside of the 35mm plastic film canister. The other feature of number one was it had another canister at the front so that the rubber band starts near the back, goes over the front canister and back to the back axle. The front canister is free running and its purpose is to allow you to put twice the length of rubber bands on because you start at the back, go to the front and then go right to the back again. So you get a very long length of rubber band on there for a standard length body. So that one's really designed to go a long distance, not really to go fast. Number four was just an exercise in making one out of cardboard and I've used it for things like seeing how much weight it can carry. So again, it was never designed to go particularly fast. But I've put rubber tyres on it and I'm going to put a bigger rubber band on it and see how fast it'll go. So I'll try number one against number four and then the winner against the new car. Okay, I can't show you the very first test between those two cars because it was a complete failure. Number one car, the tyres on it which were made from the insulation off of power cables, it's the rubber insulation strip from power cables, just wasn't good enough because I'd put extra rubber bands on it to make it go as fast as I could. It was just wheel spinning. So now I'm putting the rubber tyres that I use most often nowadays, which are cut from rubber washing up gloves. They're just strips cut off the rubber gloves. So I've put those over and hopefully that will give us better grip and at least it will move forwards this time. OK, let's see how they go. So, as expected, by me anyway, number one was the faster. OK, number one against the new boy. The new boy had the faster acceleration, but it was running out of power towards the end and number one was catching it up again because number one's got more rubber band lengthwise, so it's going to last for longer. So, the new boy won, but on a longer run, my dear old number one car would have caught it up and passed it, I think. Summary time. Rubber band powered car number four was never designed to go fast. It was just designed to be an easy car to make with just drinking straws and barbecue skewers for the axles, cardboard body, sticky tape holding it together. So nice easy car to build and it didn't do bad. Number one was never designed to be a fast car. It was designed to go a longer distance by being able to double the length of rubber band it carried. 
and on a longer run I think this one would have beaten the new boy simply because it was able to keep itself powered for a longer distance. But on the day the new boy won because he's been designed specifically to go in my kitchen. Short distance, powerful motor, fast acceleration, so it did the distance the fastest. Uh, just in case you're wondering, the red line, that's probably a metre into the beginning of my kitchen, so they're only running about four metres for the test.